the doctrine of, of baptism, um, the baptism in Christ. Um, and I want to deal with that uh, tonight in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Let me turn there. Amen. How many received this morning that was here? Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, it says somebody got somebody says somebody got saved this morning. Two people got saved this morning. Hallelujah. The whole family. Oh, so it was their daughter that got saved Saturday night. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So God is saving people. And Amen. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see. Let's just go ahead and pray, and then we'll just jump into these scriptures. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege and honor to share your word. And we just ask, God, that the anointing flow tonight. Think through our minds, speak through our lips. Let us leave out of this house different than we came in, Father. And uh, just direct us, God, the way you want us to go, what you want us to say, what you want us to do, God. Uh, just be in control of this uh, word here, God, and the rest of this service, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind every devil on assignment against the word. We uh, command you to leave. Go back to the dry places in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I always cast the devil back to the dry places. I'll make sure he knows where he's going. Uh, but he's he. we cast him back to the dry places because the Bible says that the devils, uh, Matthew chapter 12 says the demons walk through dry places seeking rest. Hallelujah. So we put him back there. Hallelujah. And uh, well, let's let's get into this Romans chapter six, verse one. Paul, writing here, um, asked this question: um, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, let let me stop there, and I'll, I'm just going to stop down here through these verses and talk about a few things, however the Lord leads. Um, but I want you to understand that Paul taught grace in such a way that it spawned this question. Um, that, well, if we're under grace, then uh, we, we can just live how we want to live, Paul? Is that what you're saying? See, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're teaching grace correctly and you're teaching it biblically, uh, it is going to result in this question. True, uh, true teaching on grace will uh, bring up the question because grace is so amazing. Oh, hence the song Amazing Grace. Grace is so amazing. The grace of God and what he did through Jesus, it's, it's so completed the work of our salvation and it's so secured us. Those of us that have put our faith in what Jesus has done, we are so secured in this salvation that it's almost, I, I don't want to say it's impossible because the Bible does talk about, and this is a whole other teaching, the Bible does talk about uh, having a reprobate mind. It does talk about people that get to a place where um, they no longer are drawn to repentance, but that that's not God, That's that's you. That's the person resisting and rejecting the Holy Ghost so much to the point that God says, I, it's not that God says I give up, it's that God says I can't. I can't get to them because they don't want to retain me in their knowledge. Um, Romans even talks about that. They don't want to, they, they don't want to, uh, uh, they, they they don't want to hear me. They don't want to listen, and so they get they get to a place where um, they no longer feel a draw to the house of God. They know their conscience is seared. 
They no longer feel any sorrow, remorse for sin or anything. Um, people that today are worried about whether or not they've been cut off or, um, you know, some people have worried about whether or not they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost and can't be forgiven. If you're worried about it, you're okay. <laughs> It's the ones that aren't worried about God and aren't worried about the Holy Spirit. If there's a draw in you, if you feel any kind of sorrow, like, like, like you feel like maybe God has cut you off, and there's an, a little bit of concern there, you're, you're not cut off. You're not rejected. Amen. It's, 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 it's those that have just resisted. But this salvation is so secure that unless you absolutely resist and reject the Holy Spirit over and over and over and over, and I mean over and over and over and over, there is no way to lose this salvation. It's sealed in the blood of Jesus. Sins are paid for past, present, and future. And so when you teach that, you teach that kind of grace, it bears this question. Well, since grace abounds, should we just continue in sin and just live in sin? And so um, notice Paul's answer to this question, verse 2. God forbid. God forbids. God forbids that you continue in sin just because there's grace. That's an abuse of grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God forbid. Then Paul says this, uh, because people that are asking this question or have this question on their mind are not thinking fully about the work of salvation. They're they're missing something in their thinking. Excuse me. (coughs) Paul says, how shall we that are dead to sin, live any longer therein. So he's saying, well, Paul, shall we continue in sin because grace does abound? He says, well, wait a minute. How can you, how can you that are dead to sin uh, live any longer in it? Yeah. See, Paul answers their question with his own question. How are you going to continue in sin when you're dead to it? Paul's saying, so sins paid for, past, present, and future, your salvation is eternally secure. There's, there's nothing you can really do to mess that up, uh, but that doesn't give you a license to keep on sinning. You have to take into consideration that when you got saved, you died to sin, and that's where we're, we're, we're missing it. When you got saved, you died to sin. It's kind of like cutting a wire. And, and that wire becomes a dead wire. Whatever that wire was running power to, it's no longer running power to that thing. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. You're no longer connected uh, through your new birth to the power of sin or to the, the desire of sin. To, you know, uh, when you had a new birth, uh, there was a disconnection in your nature, your human nature got transformed. They that are in Christ, come on, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, are what? New creatures, new creations. Old things have passed away. The old nature, the old man, hallelujah, that was controlled and ruled by sin and had that sin nature has passed away, is dead. And that's kind of what Romans 6 gets into when it gets into the doctrine of baptism in Christ, and we'll kind of deal with that maybe. But, uh, yeah, it dies, and then a new creation is formed on the inside of you. That's your first creative miracle when you got saved. When you believed in your heart that Jesus died and rose again, and you confessed with your mouth, you, you, you had a creative miracle on the inside and a new nature that is now alive to God. Remember we talked this morning? Uh, that because of Adam's sin, when you were born in your first birth, you were dead to God. You, you had a dead wire to heaven. Come on. Adam cut that wire for us. Amen. Are, are you hearing me? 
and you had no God consciousness. Oh, but then the light of the gospel came in. And now you cut the wire to sin. And you've hooked up a live wire to heaven. And now there is a nature on the inside of you that will resist and reject sin. I'm not saying you won't sin or you won't fail. But there will be something in you that will f- cause you to immediately feel a remorse. And what you used to be able to go do, you won't be happy doing it. That's that new nature because you're taking that new man into a place he don't want to be. That new man came from God and he don't want to be anywhere but with God. Are you hearing me? That's why, that's why it, this erroneous story stupid, idiotic idea of you can be a gay Christian. There's no such thing. You can be a Christian that's battling homosexuality. You can be a Christian that's resisting those old temptations of the flesh. But there's no way that you can be a gay Christian and accept homosexuality as if God is accepting it and walk around in peace. You are deceived, my brother, my sister. Hallelujah. Because when you died, you became a new creation, and that new creation wants the heart of God. It has the heart of God. It desires the things of God. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. And so, uh, you know, as far as the homosexual question goes, no, no, you cannot be a homosexual and Christian. You can be a homosexual and not saved. You can be a Christian and be battling the, the desires of that. But if you are a Christian and homosexual, no, you are deceived. You might be reprobate. You might be turned over to your own uh, filthy lusts, as Romans chapter 1 says, and desires. Hallelujah. And that's a dangerous place to be if you can walk in the house of God and feel no condemnation or conviction over that lifestyle. Now, is that the only sin? No, it's not the only sin, and sin is sin. But I'm telling you, there's a deception in this world today, and, and it needs to be dealt with. We need... We need a, you know what we need? We need a good teaching in this modern church on salvation. On what the Bible says about being born again. We're getting people born again and they're coming in with all their mess and they're saying to the preacher, you know, can can I live like this? And the preachers don't want to be offensive today. Doesn't want to lose his crowd. Doesn't want to lose his number. And he twists scriptures or he ignores scriptures or he doesn't preach certain things just to keep people uh, uh, coming and keep people. It's it's that seeker-friendly spirit that's coming into the church today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I heard the stupidest thing today. Y'all probably heard it too, the, 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 the big old church that won't. Uh, that they're trying to get people that aren't saved to come to the house of God and so they're not mentioning the blood or the crucifixion and and the resurrection because they don't want to offend. How are they going to get saved? I'm trying to figure that out because the blood of Jesus is the only thing that will wash away your sins. The crucifixion is the only thing. Come on. Paul said, oh, hallelujah. Paul, come on, Paul, Apostle Paul said, I came to you not preaching anything that that I knew. I just preached Christ and him crucified. Well, who in the world was he preaching it to? He was preaching it to unbelievers. He was preaching it to people that wasn't saved. Hallelujah, why? Because he was trying to get them saved. Oh, y'all got me preaching now. This Bible is an offensive thing, church. It's a rock of offense. Come on, hallelujah. It's it's designed to be thrown in your path and make you stumble and make you fall till you go down to your knees and understand I need 
that say, I'm a mess. I can't fix it. I can't turn it around. I need Jesus. Come on, you need to hear about the crucifixion because you should have been there. But he went there in your place and he fixed it for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so when Paul's dealing with this question, let me get back to this, hallelujah. When Paul's dealing with this question, shall we continue in sin, grace does abound. And he says, wait a minute, that don't make sense because you're dead to sin. Uh you're dead to sin. Why why do you want to continue in sin? Paul um, further explains this, and he goes deeper into this as he deals with the doctrine of, of baptism into Christ. Now, there are three baptisms in Scripture. Water baptism, which is really just an outward sign of your commitment to Christ. As you go down in the water, that's testifying that the old man has died. Um, and as you come up out of the water, it's testifying that the new man has, is alive. Hallelujah. Then there's Holy Ghost baptism. That's baptism in the Holy Ghost where uh, that comes with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And we've taught extensively on that. And I've been ridiculed and ostracized for that teaching. But it's doctrine. Then, then there's a third baptism, which is the baptism into Christ. This, is, this happens at salvation. You are baptized into Christ. So, so first you're baptized into Christ, then you need to get water baptized, and then you get baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's where the power comes from. Amen. Hallelujah. Those are three baptisms that you need, and that's three baptisms that we teach in this church. Um, but he says in verse 3, know ye not, because he says, so, so let's, let's understand where Paul's at. Shall we continue in sin because of grace, Paul? And Paul says, what? No, God forbid, no. Listen, how can you continue in sin when you're dead to sin? Verse 3, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. We were baptized into his death. When you were baptized, you were baptized into Christ at salvation, you were baptized into his death, hallelujah, you died with him. What died with him? The old man. And, we, and he goes on, and maybe we'll get to that more. But let, let me deal with this word baptize here. Baptize in the Greek is the word baptizo, and it means to immerse or submerge. Now, but, but to really understand the word baptizo, you have to compare it to another Greek word, which is babto, B-A-P-T-O. Both baptizo and babto describe in the Greek something being dipped or immersed into a solution, but babto is temporary. So we're talking about you dip it in and pull it out. Baptizo is something permanent. You, you dip it in and you leave it in. To be baptized into Christ is to be permanently immersed into Christ and become one with him. You become one with Christ. In the, and when we're talking about baptized into Christ, I don't know if I'm doing a good job or not, but when you're talking about being baptized into Christ, you're talking about really being made one with him. So everything that happened to Christ happens to you. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I did the whole, let me see something here. Just um, play the Jeopardy song in your mind, the Jeopardy theme. Do, 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 do. No, 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 in your mind, not out loud. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if I want to. Uh, let me see. Mm. 
Uh, okay. Ephesians chapter 1. Um, let me, I prob there's probably a better scripture, but this one's one coming to me. Um, Ephesians chapter one, fellas, I don't know if you want to pull this up, just pull up. I just need verse uh, four, I really think. According as he hath chosen us in him, talking about Jesus, before the foundations of the world. Okay, so that was before he ever created the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Notice, holy and without blame. Not without sin, but without blame. God's not blaming you because he, oh, that's a whole other message. I shouldn't have said that. He put it all on Jesus. He charged Jesus with it. He imputed Jesus with your sin, and he imputed you with Jesus' righteousness. That word impute means to charge to your account. Hallelujah. He charged Jesus with your sin and made him pay for your sin at the cross and blamed him as if he did it. Hallelujah so that he could charge you with righteousness and you could be before him blameless, holy and blessed. Somebody say, I'm holy and blameless before the Lord. Now, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see this. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. In him. Everybody say, in him. Let me explain this to you. Uh, when So, when when God, in his wisdom, before the foundation of the world, he knew man would fall. So he went ahead and created, he, he ran ahead and had this plan of salvation. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth. Come on, amen. Are you following me? None of this is in my notes tonight. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, so as God is He's planned to redeem us through Jesus, to fix the fall of man through Jesus. And, and so Ephesians said that he's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So to God, when, when, when he decided before the foundation of the world to crucify Jesus, he already saw us in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Jesus, was, when Jesus was going to the cross, we were in him. So when, so when they, I'm talking about this is the doctrine of baptism into Christ, that when Jesus went to the cross according to God, how God saw it, when Jesus went to the cross, we went with him. So look, if, if I take, if I take this piece of paper, this is your song? If I take this piece of paper and I put it in this Bible and I take this Bible and I mail this Bible to California with this paper in it, where's the paper going to go? Hallelujah. If, if somebody takes that Bible and sends it back here to Florida to me, where's that paper going to go? Why? Because that paper is in the Bible. That paper is going everywhere this Bible's going. Before the foundations of the world, you were chosen in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. And so when God, when God sent Jesus to the cross, he was sending you there with him. And the reason you're never going to lose this salvation is because if you've put your faith in Christ, it's as if you already died that death for your sin. You've already paid the price in Christ, and there's no more price to be paid, church. Oh, hallelujah. And so 
to be baptized into Christ. That is to be made one with Christ. So now, everything that happened to Jesus, Jesus went to the cross, you went to the cross. Jesus was buried, you were buried. Jesus got up. Are you hearing me? Woo! Hallelujah. That's what all Romans 6, everything I just said is in Romans chapter 6. I'll read it to you. I'll, I'll read it to you here in just a second. But, uh, hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you need to get rid of the condemnation and the guilt. You're, you're thinking God's punishing you. He's not punishing you. You've already been punished in Christ. As far as God's concerned, you already served your sentence. Huh? Come on, amen. And the new creature that you are is blameless before the Lord in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> hallelujah. Another way... Another way to be to describe being baptized into Christ, a good way is is coffee. How many coffee drinkers we got in here? Hallelujah! The rest of you will pray for you. Hallelujah! <laughs> we might need to pray for the coffee drinkers. We might need to get. Hallelujah. Amen. But the best way to describe being baptized into Christ, I believe. It's like coffee. When you make coffee, you take you take ground up coffee and you put it in the filter and you and you put it into the coffee pot and and you take tasteless, odorless, bland water and you put that water into the coffee pot. Then the coffee pot, what's it do? It begins to heat up the water and it sucks the water through this tube and it sends it into the ground up coffee. Now once it goes into the coffee, what happens? It comes out changed. Doesn't it? It's no longer tasteless, odorless, bland water. What do, what do you call it? You call it coffee. Well, what do you call the ground up beans in the filter? Coffee. Huh? So now you're calling the water the same thing as what it went into. Come on, bat, that's being baptized into Christ. I was tasteless, odorless, bland water, but I was baptized into Jesus. And once I got baptized into Jesus, I changed into someone that's now just like Jesus. I'm Christ-like now. Are you hearing me? Now, not only have I been changed, let me say this. Not only have I been changed into someone that's, that's like Christ, if you go ask for water at a restaurant, they'll give it to you for free. But go ask for coffee. Come on. They're going to charge you. Somebody say amen. amen. Now that coffee was at one time water, and when it was water, it had no value. It was free. Somebody say amen. amen. But since it's been put into the coffee grains, its value has changed. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now that I've been baptized into Christ and become like him, my value has changed. Does anybody's value change today? I got something on the inside of me now that this world wants. Don't They don't know they want it, but it's something this world wants. It's something this world needs that they don't know they need. Hallelujah. And so today, if you're feeling worthless, if you're feeling uh, like you're nothing and you're feeling like a nobody, get baptized into Jesus. It changes your value. You that are born again, quit believing the lie of the enemy that you're worthless. My goodness, you were worthless. But now that you've been baptized into Christ, you have something on the inside of you. Oh, you have something on the inside of you. Millionaires are paying millions of dollars trying to find it, can't find it. But you got it. Somebody say, I'm valuable. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Hallelujah. Now, here's the other thing about coffee. Let me just stay with this coffee revelation. Here's the other thing about coffee. Look in, uh, give me John 14 and 12. Y'all all right? Hallelujah. Uh, John 14 and 12, because we're, talk- we're still talking about being baptized into Christ. Baptized into Christ. Are you getting anything out of this? Hallelujah. John 14, 12. Um, he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, this is Jesus. This is Jesus talking because it's, it's in red in your Bibles. He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Now, Jesus said, and I've taught this in here extensively, um, but maybe some of you haven't heard this. You might need to hear this. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus said, you're going to do his works. Isn't that what he said? I think that's what he said. These works that I do, shall you do also. Isn't that what it says? Okay. Just making sure. Um, because we don't teach the doctrine of cessationism in here, that, that the, the gifts died with the apostles. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. We'll do the works of Jesus. And how are we going to do it? Well, we gotta, we're going to do it the, the same way Jesus did by his same power. What was that power? It was the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you need to get baptized into Christ, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus did everything he did by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Look, look, Luke 4 and 18. This is Jesus. He, he's, in the, uh, he's in the synagogue in his hometown, and he grabs the, the book of Isaiah, and he turns to it, and he quotes, I think it's Isaiah 61, I think is what he quotes. And he says, look what he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, and this is, this is a prophecy concerning Jesus. Jesus is reading a prophecy concerning himself in the synagogue. This is about Jesus. Isaiah wrote this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Look at that. Jesus was anointed to preach. How did Jesus preach? Through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. How do you and I preach today? It better be through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He says, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Look what he says in, look what Acts 10, 38 says about Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? Come on, help me, the Holy Ghost and with power. Now, what Holy Ghost was Jesus anointed with? Same Holy is I don't know that there's a different Holy Ghost, folks. He's the third person in the Godhead. He embodies all of who God is in spirit form. Jesus operated in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, hallelujah. And with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. His Father was with him. Hallelujah. So, uh, how are we going to do the works of Jesus? The same way Jesus did it, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't do anything. He was all God, but he was all man. But he didn't do anything out of his deity. He did it out of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He did it as a man operating under the anointing. Otherwise, he could not give us this promise of John 14 that you'll do the works that I do. Amen. Amen. Peter didn't walk on the water because he was perfect. But wasn't he at one point before he began to sink? And then after he got delivered from sinking, he must have got back up on top of the water. But at one point, wasn't he in the same level and power and authority as Jesus? He wasn't even, he wasn't even, he didn't, he hadn't even been filled with the Holy Ghost. He hadn't even been to the upper room yet. Come on, Amen. Jesus said, you'll do the works that I do because you'll do it with the same power. But, he, but go back to John 14. I want you to, I wanted to remind you of what it says. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Now here's, here's why. Because I go to my Father. 
Woo, hallelujah. The significance of this, notice, notice, because a lot of people miss this, and I missed this for years until the Lord slowed me down and showed it to me. But the significance of this is we can do the works that Jesus did because he went to the Father. And, and that's talking about in, in his ascension after the resurrection. After his death and resurrection, he went to the Father. Come on, hallelujah. Now, the significance of this is who Jesus was going to be when he went to the Father. Back to the coffee. You take water and put it into whole coffee beans, you won't get coffee. Come on, somebody. You got to crush the beans. Come on, somebody. You got to crush the beans. You got to break the outer shell, and you got to release what's on the inside of that bean. Then when you put the water into beans that's been crushed and the inside exposed, you'll get a transformation into the coffee. Oh, hallelujah. Is anybody following what I'm saying? See, look in John 14, 17. Jesus said this. He said this to his disciples. Even the spirit of truth, now that's the Holy Ghost, right, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, right, neither knoweth him, but you know him. He's talking to his disciples. You know him. Watch this. For he dwells with you and shall be future tense in you. Notice he said with you. The Holy Spirit was with them how? In the person of Jesus. But then he said he shall be in you. In other words, what's he saying? What's in me is going to get into you and transform you. And these works that I do Come on, hallelujah. These works that I do shall you do. So here's the disciples, and they're with Jesus all the time. They're walking with him, but they're never able to walk in his faith or the measure of his power. A little bit, but not much. Why? Because you can't get coffee from a whole bean. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. The, some of y'all will get it tomorrow, maybe. Hallelujah. The shells got to be crushed. Understand that when Jesus went to the Father, he had just been to the crushing place. Come on, somebody. The outer shell, the body of sin, was crushed at Calvary. That body, watch this, that body of sin. When Jesus went to the cross, that body that he went to the cross and destroyed and killed, that body represented a body of sin, the body of flesh that separated us from the power of the Holy Spirit. It kept that power behind a veil under the law. It kept it back there in a veil, and they could only go in behind that veil once a year with the right clothes on and with the right person and with the right sacrifice and with the right blood or or else they died. Oh, hallelujah. But when he went to the Father, oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. When he went to the Father, he had been to a place where that body of sin that separated us from the power of the Holy Spirit, it was crushed. It was destroyed. What separated me from the power of God was destroyed at Calvary. Woo! Understand something. When Jesus went to the Father, what went to the Father was not, what, not who came to the earth. Whew. Are y'all getting this? I said what went to the Father when he ascended back to the Father was not what came through the virgin birth. It was what came through the virgin birth. Everything was contained on the inside. But when he went to the Father, he had been crushed, woo, and he was glorified. You know what that means? That means everything that was on the inside of him got on the outside of him, and it was released. Come on. That, 
That's why when he appeared to his disciples for 40 days before he went back to heaven, nobody could recognize him because the one that showed up to the shore when they were fishing, the one that walked through the wall was not the one that was hanging on the cross. Come on, hallelujah. The one that got up on the third day was one that everything that was hidden on the inside, everything that sin had kept us from was now exposed and re- oh you better praise God Whew. so the disciples who when they walked with Jesus on the earth they were still afraid they were full of fear they were liars they were cussers come on but When Jesus got crushed on the cross and the outer shell was removed, whoo, hallelujah, those same lying, cussing, fearful disciples on the day of Pentecost were completely transformed, Stephen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And they were turned into righteous, holy men of God that were full of faith. And Peter, that just a a few days ago had denied Jesus and cussed somebody out because they called him a Jesus follower. He stood up on the day of Pentecost. Y'all ain't wanting to help me, all right. I'll preach it anyway. He stood up on the day of Pentecost and he preached the first Pentecostal message and told Hold all of them. If you'll repent, hallelujah, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that same man started causing the lame to jump around. That same man would walk through the streets and a shadow would heal people. Well, what happened? They walked with him for three and a half years and never did anything like what they did. After he went to the Father. <laughs> Why? Because he'd been to that crushing place. And everything on the inside of him was exposed. And now these disciples that are with Jesus have become one with him and are baptized into this risen Savior. And now everything that's on the inside of Jesus has gotten on to the inside of them. Are you hearing me? Woo, Jesus. Uh, can, can, Can we just read it? I think I could probably just read it now. I could probably just read it. Because look what it says. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, Romans 6 and 3, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. What new life? The same life that Jesus is walking in right now. What does Ephesians 2 say? Oh, God, hallelujah, you that were dead in sins, he has quickened together, for for by grace you are saved. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And has made you to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Whew. John 4, I believe it is, and 18, somewhere around in there, in First, I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 4 says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Woo. Who Jesus is now, post-resurrection, is who we are, that we've been baptized into Christ. We've been baptized into his death and Therefore, we're walking in the newness of, where was I at? Hallelujah. We should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together, that that simply means united. We've been united together in the likeness of his death. 
we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Come on, somebody. Who Jesus was post-resurrection is not who he was pre-resurrection. Can I say something to you? Who you are post-resurrection is not who you were pre Yes, you had a resurrection. I don't know where it happened. It might have happened in the Baptist church. It might have happened in the Methodist church. It might have happened in your car. It might have happened in your living room. But wherever you gave your heart to Jesus, who got up is not who went down. You were baptized into Christ. And you came out like him. Come on, somebody. Shout it. I came out like him. Woo! Oh, I'm about to run. Taj, I'm about to run, brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! I'm walking in resurrection power. I wish you could believe this Monday. Oh, I wish some of you could believe it on Tuesday. You are walking in resurrection power. You've been baptized into Christ. Woo! You came out with blind eye opening power. The church just never told you. You came out with power and authority to run the devil off. Church just never told you. Come on, somebody. They told you how bad you were. They told you how much of a disappointment you were. They told you how you need to straighten this up and straighten that up. Nobody ever told you what you could do. They told you what you couldn't do. They never told you what you could do. I'm telling you what you can do. Come on, somebody. And if you get worried about what you can do and figure out what you can do, you won't even be thinking about what you can't do. It won't even be an issue. You'll be thinking about who can I lay hands on next? Who can I preach to next? Who? Where's that devil? Let me at. You'll be like Scrappy. Let me at. Let me at him. I'll pulverize him. Let... Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. You were in Christ going to the cross. And when he died, that was the old man dying. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin or be a slave to sin. The body of sin, the body that could sin, the body that desires sin, the body that was a servant of sin. Uh, did you get those amplified verses? You know, let's, let's look at those of that saint. Let me the one, I think it's this one. This one, this one the amplified version of, I don't know when I'm going to be done. I might be done after this. I don't know. Verse 6. Um, the, this is the amplified version, I think. And there's an Amplified and there's the Amplified Classic. Well, the Amplified describes our old man. It says, we know that our old self, which is our human nature without the Holy Spirit. Your human nature before the Holy Spirit came in, before you were baptized into Christ, and what was in Jesus got into you because he had been crushed. Are y'all following me now? Amen. Before that, your human nature without the Holy Spirit, it was, a, it was a nature that desired the things of this world. Well, come on. Amen. Look, our old human nature without the Holy Spirit. Woo, that was a mess, wasn't it? Anybody remember that one? 
<laughs> Woo, that feller was terrible. Remember when, how y'all talked when you didn't have the Holy Ghost? Some of y'all with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Some of y'all with the Holy Ghost are probably, you know, you're growing. You're growing. But that one without the Holy Ghost, whoo, yeah, that was, that was terrible. We, yes, hallelujah. We know that our old self, our human nature without the Holy Spirit, what, what happened to that girl, what happened to that man was nailed to the cross. Come on, folks. She ain't alive no more. He ain't alive no more. Was nailed to the cross with Jesus. Woo! Come on, hallelujah. You, next, time, next time they talk about your past, just say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. She ain't been alive for 2,000 years. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> what do you mean? They died 2,000 years ago with Jesus at the cross. Hallelujah. Is it, when you got saved, that, that old girl, that old boy, got, he finally got sense enough to lay down, hallelujah, and stay down. He was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. Now, the, the body of sin, go to the other one. It, it's described real good in the Amplified Classic. We know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil. That we might no longer be the slaves of sin. The baptism into Christ completely took out of order, made out of order this body of sin. This body that was the instrument of sin, it became inactive. Why did it become inactive? Because the old human nature that was controlling it and using it for sin, it died. This is going back to what Paul said. He said, how, how, do you, how do you continue in sin when you've died to sin? When the human nature that was full of sin died at the cross, this is the baptism of, of into Christ. This is what the doctrine is. Died on the cross with Jesus. When that nature died, how can your body be a body of sin anymore? I know I'm blowing some of y'all's minds, but it's the, it's the Bible. How can it be a body of sin any longer when, when the person that used to control it and use it as an instrument of sin died with Jesus on the cross, and you're a new creature now, right? Amen. And so now that new man is not going to use this body as an instrument of sin, but an instrument of righteousness and holiness. Isn't that good? I said, isn't that good? So when you, that's a, so to say, because of grace, shall we continue? And say, that's a stupid question. Because ask me as a born-again believer, or ask yourself, what, what do you want to do? Because you're thinking, what you're, you're, what you're taking, at, when, when someone says, well, if, if you're preaching grace like you're preaching, then you're just saying we can live however we want to live. Ask me how I want to live. Because that's what you're forgetting. Because I've been baptized into Christ. My want to's have changed. Right? I don't want a license to sin. Because I don't want to sin. Because who wanted to sin? Was nailed to the cross. And I'm a new creature. Right? Uh, I got to hush, but uh, oh my goodness. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So the baptism into Christ killed 
the old man that controlled the body and made the and, and used the body as an instrument of sin. So now you no longer have to serve sin because that slave master died. So then, look, verse 7. Do you got verse 7? How many of these verses do you got down to verse 11? That's good. Um, for he that is dead is what? Huh? I don't guess I have to preach that, do I? I just preached it, right? Now, if we be dead with Christ... We believe we shall also live with him. Now, that's, that's future tense, but that's now and future tense. We died with him on the cross. Amen. Baptized into Christ. So we're made one with his death, and, and we're also made one with his resurrection. So we now live with him in this resurrection state. Right now, we, we live with him in, in, in the resurrection state that he has in power and authority. We are seated with him in heavenly places. So right now you are walking in the authority of Jesus. You're also living with him in his righteousness. You are the righteousness of Jesus. Come on. You have his access. You have his authority. You have his power. Y'all got what I'm saying? But then you will live with him in a glorified body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when corruption shall put on incorruption, come on, and death shall be swallowed up in life. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Come on, we're going to shed this carnal physical body that gets sick and breaks down all the time. Come on, somebody. And we're going to put on a glorified body and live with him. Why? Because you've been baptized into Christ. So you're not just going to experience part of the resurrection. You're going to experience the whole thing because one day the trumpet's going to sound. Oh, I didn't mean to go there. I'm sorry. The trumpet's going to sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Woo! Hallelujah. And we're going up. Anybody going up? Come on, if you've been baptized into Christ, you're going up. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I just wanted to get to this one verse, and I'll let you all go. Uh Knowing, we shall live with, in verse 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. We don't, he don't have to die again, neither do we. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. When Jesus died on the cross, he died unto sin. What does that mean? That means, and I'm almost, I'm done, I'm done. I know, I'm, I've been up here too long. He, he died unto sin. He destroyed that body that could sin. The, the, Jesus was sinless. He never sinned. But if he could have sinned, he would have had to done it in that body. Huh? Right? But what did he, you know, in the garden, what did he pray? Well, thank God he battled. Not my will. But thy will be done. So because he had the bo- he had a body, are y'all trekking with me? I'm not I'm not heretic right now, right? I'm I'm not heretical. I'm in the scriptures. Because he had a body, because he was a man, he had free will. That's why he prayed in the garden, not my will. So if Jesus could have sinned, he'd uh he 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 he'd have had to do it in that body. Right? But what did he do with that body? He killed it. He nailed it to the cross. Crushed it. For us. We were in him. We were in him. Dying. Huh? And he, he don't have to die no more. Sin has been defeated once and for all. 
in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Woo. He died to sin once, but in that he liveth, he lives unto God. Now, here's verse 11, and I'm done. Likewise, look, this is the doctrine of baptism into Christ. You see this? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What's, what is Romans 6, 11 telling us? It's telling us you need to reckon yourself. This is the doctrine of baptism into Christ. You need to reckon yourself. That word reckon means to account, to, to consider, to think of yourself, to judge yourself, to see yourself, to reckon yourselves what? Dead to sin but alive to God through Jesus Christ. You need to see yourself as if you went to the cross and the body of, of sin, the body that could sin, and that human nature that could use that body as an instrument of sin, you need to see it as, it, as if it died on the cross. And that you got up on the third day with Jesus and now, who you are now is a new creature in Christ. And the body you have now is not an instrument of sin, but it's an instrument of righteousness. Because who you are on the inside is just like Jesus. Because you've been baptized into Christ. Hallelujah. Because he was crushed at the cross. Come on. And what was on the inside got out. And now on the inside, you are like him. And now that body is an instrument of righteousness. I, I lied. I'm not done. Verse 12, I know they don't got it. Hallelujah. I, you can pull it up real quick. But look how free you are. I just want you to see how free you are. I was done. I promise. I was promised. But look how free you are. Look how free you are. You got, you got verse 12. Hallelujah. He's getting it. Look what it says. You're so free. Hold on. This is really cool. You're so free. That the Bible says, let not sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Let not sin. You're so free that the only way sin can rule over you is you got to let it. Huh? This is the doctrine of being baptized into Christ. You are so free that you have to allow sin whew, to control you. Verse 13. I'm sorry. I thought I was done. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. You couldn't do that before. You were controlled by that old sinful nature. Oh, but it was nailed to the cross. Now you can yield your eyes, your hands, your feet, your ears to God as instruments. Oh, verse 14, I'm sorry. Woo, oh, verse 14. <laughs> We're a weird church, ain't we? Getting excited about the word. Who else is saying, read me another scripture, preacher? <laughs> Everybody's saying, oh, I wish he'd shut up. But we're like, oh, one more scripture, one more scripture. <laughs> For sin shall not have dominion over you. Woo. Why? Because you're not under the law, but you're under grace. You've been baptized into Christ. You died to sin with Jesus at the cross, folks. Woo, hallelujah. And sin can no longer dominate you. Because that old human nature without the Holy Ghost died. And who you are now is full of the Holy Ghost. You're full of the power of Jesus. Let me, 
Let me tell you what power you're full of, and I need to hear this too myself. Hallelujah. And y'all can remain standing. I'm done. Hallelujah. Y'all can go home and finish reading that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. I have to watch myself because that last scripture about opened up a whole other teaching. I got to watch myself. But we don't talk about this, guys, but listen. Listen to me. And Taj, listen to me because as you're teaching and stuff, I want you to, I want you to grasp a hold of this too. When we talk about, you know, we're, we're full of the power of Jesus and we usually talk about raising the dead and healing the sick and opening blinded eyes. And we need to start operating in that more. But you know what, other, what else we're full of when it comes to the power of Jesus? Jesus? Jesus was tempted upon all points as we are, yet without sin. We have the power to resist sin. We didn't have that before we got saved. We got it now. And every one of you that has fallen into some kind of sin or gotten into some kind of sin since you've been saved, it's, it's, it's not because you didn't have the power to resist, it's because you resisted the power. You know, the, and, and, this, and, the, and, and this is something the Lord, whew, man, this is something the Lord dealt with me about when it comes to sin and because sometimes you get into cycles of sin whatever those things may be you know he's like Sean you, you've got to watch and he was just like a real he, the Holy Spirit was like a real dad to me in this moment <sighs> and I'm still learning and he's like Sean you got to watch because every time you resist the Holy Ghost in some area of your life you become you you have the potential of becoming hard that area of your heart has the potential of becoming harder and harder to the Holy Ghost in that area to the point that you can get to a place where your whole heart maybe not be hard to God, but just in that one area, you don't feel any tugging or resisting, you know. And I don't know if it's, I, I, I don't believe that it's a salvation issue, but I do believe you open the, you slap open the door wide open to the enemy. Huh? And he'll come in through that, and he'll infiltrate and get into other areas of your life. We've got to keep our heart soft towards God. Are you following what I'm saying? And that, that, only, that only comes through repentance. Hallelujah. And you just got to repent and come back to God. And it's like, oh, God, I'm sorry, man, I screwed up here. <laughs> he, the thing, good thing about it is he doesn't throw you away. Woo! Praise the God. Woo! Hallelujah. And people say, well, God can't use a dirty vessel. Well, he ain't got nothing but dirty vessels. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. But God's not working through your flesh anyway. That's the part of you that's messy. But he's working through that renewed spirit. When God uses you, he, 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 uses, he uses that renewed, regenerated spirit that's anointed by the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you, have you received tonight? Yeah. Woo, Jesus. I feel like I said a whole lot, but I hope you <laughs> I hope you got something, hallelujah, out of this, hallelujah. But I, I, I'm telling you, man, you've been changed. You've been changed, folks. Come on, don't believe the lie that you're nothing, that you're worthless, that don't believe none of that garbage. Hallelujah. You've been changed. <laughs> 